authentication using external servers. Now in this video, we'll see how to configure authentication by using some external servers. And I'm going to show you the configuration, what should be done on the router and also on the TACAC server. So we will be simulating this lab with a packet tracer here, where I'm going to simulate some external Triplet TACAC server in a packet tracer here. So there are four steps we need to configure on the triplet client. Like most of the configuration is same as what we discussed earlier in the local database. Like first we need to start up the triplet process by using triplet new model command. And after that we need to tell the router because I want the user from here when he tell net or SSH, he must get authenticated based on the external server. But the router should know who, where is your TACAC server. So we need to configure the TACAC server, what is the IP address and then also we need to configure some keys to be exchanged between, between the, between the triplet client and the server. So we will be configuring some key between the client and the server. So this is like uh, authenticating the client and the servers. So this key has to match on both the sites. So whatever the key I'm going to use on the router one, it has to match the same key on the triplet server as well. So we use a local user account, the local user account as a fallback option because I want to configure the triplet where it has to use the TACAC server as a primary authentication method. And if it fails due to some reason, we should be able to fall back with a local, local user account. So we need to enable the triplet for the login and the list name authentication list is CCI. So authentication list tells uh, what are the authentication methods you want to use with a name called CCI here. And the first method should be TACAX and the second method should be based on the local database. And then we need to apply this uh, triplet authentication list on the VTVA line so that any user who is trying to enter through VTVA line will be authenticated based on the list. And this list says that it has to use uh, local TACAX authentication, external server TACAX authentication and if it fails, it has to fall back to the local authentication. Again, on the server side, we will be configuring two steps like adding the device as a client and creating the user accounts. We'll see these steps anyway when we get into the configuration. So I got a pre-configured topology with all the IP addressing on the router. So the router one is my triplet client. So in my scenario, this router one is my triplet client and my TACAC server is on 182.168.1.1. So the first thing we'll, we'll go to router one and we'll configure saying that triplet, we need to enable the triplet. So it's like a fresh configurations. And then we need to tell the TACAC server, TACAC server is on 192.168.1.1 and the key. We also need to define the key and the key is, let's say Cisco 123 I'm using here. Now, once we configure the TACAC server, now we need to enable a triplet, already we did that. So it's better to configure the local user account so that in case if the TACAC server fail, then we can still, we, we should be able to log in with a local user account. So I'm using the password as admin123, anyway123, so just ignore this one. And then I need to enable the triplet, triplet authentication. So once you enable the triplet authentication, it is for login. Login is for VTY or console lines. So we say login. And then we can either use a default. Default will be automatically enabled on all the lines. So I'll be using some specific name. Uh, and then what is the first method you want to use? The first method will be based on the server with a group. A protocol TACAX. So I'll be using TACAX protocol. And the second option, I can still say radius if I have a specific radius servers. So I'm using the local option as a fallback authentication. And then we need to apply this triplet authentication list on the line VTY on the VTY line. Now once you are done with this, now the next step is we, we want authentication should be done based on the based on the TACAX, right? So the next thing is we need to also configure the ACS server with these two steps. 
because the ACL server must know who is the client that is router 1 in my case if you have router 2 you need to add router 2 also switch 1 switch 2 all these clients you can add you need to add them so at this point of time we, we just have only router 1 and the next thing is we need to create some user account so I'll be using a user account of user 1 and the user 1 on and the password is also user 1 just to make it simple so of course you can so I'll be creating two user accounts user 1 and user 2 on the ACS server so probably here in the packet tracer I'm going to simulate the ACS servers because here at the NA level I'm not getting into uh, actual ACS servers but definitely when you get into CCNP we'll be using the real ACS server in the inside the VMware but here we can simulate some uh, some ACS server here inside the services you got an option of AAA so we need to enable the option of AAA on and of course here we have to select which protocol we want to use to communicate between the server and the client and the client IP address like here you have two options one option is we are going to add the router one as a AAA client and the second option here we will be adding the user accounts so I'm saying the client name is router one and the client IP address in my scenario it is 192.168.1.100 the router IP address and the key we have to use the same key what we have configured on the router if you remember we have configured some key here and of course we need to say add like that we can add router to switch one anyway I'm just adding router to just for testing purpose because anyway I am not enabling triple on that but you can try this one as an additional lab so I'm selecting tacats like that and then the user accounts we need to add the user one I'm, I'm just using the same username and the password just to make it simple but in the production networks you'll be using some complicated passwords now so this is something we need to do now for verifying we need to get into some client device so from the 1.3 computer I'll try to tell it on the router one so I'm expecting the router one will be sending the credentials to the TechX server because we have already configured who is TechX so let's go to the router the PC and the first thing I'll try to make sure that this PC have reachability to my gateway that's a basic thing I need to check because if I don't have reachability then there will be a problem so you can see I have reachability so which means I can tell that to my router and this time I'm going to use the user account which are configured the user accounts which I created on the ACS server the user one and the user one and you can see I'm able to log in with the user account so let me try with the user two user two and the user two I should be able to log in so because because we configured on the router to send these credentials to the external server and on this external server we have created the user account and we added the router one as a client so if you want to add the router to switch one and switch to these devices you need to follow the same process now for testing wise let, let, let me try to log in with my admin account the local user account so it doesn't allow me to log in because the reason is this account is not present in the TACAC server because whenever you uh, whenever so when this user is trying to log in to the router it's going to send out a request to the server and on the server this admin account is not present because the server is reachable and as long as the server is reachable it is going to use only the first method that is based on the TACACs what we have configured here so this is the first preferable method if it fails let's say due to some reason if the TACAC server is not reachable then only the local authentication will be used okay so in my case let's let's go and disconnect the uh, let, let me remove the connection from to the TACAC server assuming the TACAC server fails or maybe some some kind of network issue now if I go to my computer and if I try to log in once again this time with the user account on the TACAC server it's not going to work and the reason is because the TACAC server is not reachable 
So it will try to try to verify whether this user account is in the local database. If it is not present, it will simply says the login is invalid. Now I want to make sure that I should be able to log in with my local user account in case if the TechAx server fails. So it is trying to log in with, first it will try to reach the TechAx server. That's what it was doing. And if the TechAx server is not reachable, then it will try to check the local database. And as per my local database, this user account was created. So it will allow me to log in. If you're using the real ACS servers, then the options will be like this. So once you log into the ACS server, you can see most of the options relating to user accounts will be inside this user and identity stores. We go to the users and create the user accounts. And of course, configure the passwords here. And if you want to add the router one as a client, then most of these options will be inside the network resources. Network resources and network devices and triplet clients. So add the router and then also you can add an IP address or the subnets and then we have to check the TACAX protocol here and configure the password here and then click submit there is an option of submit and then save it.